Oh, I'm live. Oh, fantastic. Hello, my friends, the internet, new people who are watching. Welcome to my uncomfortable self show. Um, hey, anyway, happy Saturday. Uh, it's me, North Shore DM. We are the Superior Adventurers Guild. I'm glad I highlighted it so I don't screw that up. Um, welcome to our Twitch channel. Welcome to this show, Roll Your Doom, uh, where we talk about cool game mastery, RPG things, all this, all the stuff, whatever it is. Talk to people about stuff, which is some of what we're doing today. We're talking to some plate, some people who were players in a game. Um, it's going to be super fun. Um, during our stream, uh, if you have any questions, um, I have. A super cool chatbot that takes questions, exclamation point question, and then type your question. And it'll come up in, uh, in the chat. Uh, we have our really dope producer, uh, Dungeon Master Dave. Um, he will be compiling a list of questions that you, the live viewers, enter in that we will hopefully enter, enter, that we will hopefully answer. Um, in a meaningful way at the end, towards the end, last five or 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe. Um, yeah, that's that's that. Um, I do have some announcements. Um, this Wednesday, we will, of course, as usual, be playing our Beyond Salt Marsh game right here, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's gonna be fun, but we have to figure out what happened after last week, which was a thing. It was a thing. Some stuff happened. It was big. Turns out crying really is a free action. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't watched that, check it out on our Twitch channel. It might be up on our YouTube channel already. I don't remember. I forget things. Dave has just told me that it is. So check it out there, too. Um, this Thursday, ooh, let me check my calendar before I say this. Yes, this Thursday, the 18th. This coming Thursday, the 18th, we will be starting a new show with myself wearing um, my uh, Dungeon Master hat. Um, it will be in the Svealand campaign setting by Dun uh, Dream Realm Storytellers, uh, which is a Norse mythology-inspired game. We have some new players joining us. There are six of them. I don't know why I said that I wanted five or six players. That was crazy of me to do, but we're going to do it. It's going to be awesome. Um, and uh, it's called Midwinter's Keening. So if you have any idea what those words might mean together, um, or what at least keening means, you will be equally as prepared as my players are for the death I'm about to rain down on them, like unholy hellfire. It's going to be super fun. I'm excited. Um, anyway, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the Index Card RPG game I ran for my friends right here um, a few weeks, almost a month ago, uh, in their Altered State campaign setting. Um, it's a cyberpunk thing. We're going to talk about uh, We're going to talk about it in like an after-action review or after-action report. An AAR, if you will, a debrief, perhaps. Um, I'm joined by two of my players from that game. Uh, yeah, let's let's meet them. Hello, are they? Are you here? Yeah, I don't awesome. know. Are we here? Hello. Are you here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Um, so please, um, we have introduced ourselves before. Uh, you know, usually as as our characters in our Salt Marsh game. Uh, but maybe say a little bit about yourselves as a player, as a real person. Hey, everybody. I'll go first. Hey, my name's Andy. Um, I, let's see. I play Zav Santos in the, um, in our running of Altered States. Uh, he was a enhanced human decker. And it was a lot of fun. Um, I also play in the Salt Marsh game, so yeah, I don't. I'm pretty new to role playing games in general. Um, just 
kind of started playing in 2020. So I had a little bit of experience from, you know, when I was younger, but not a lot. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm, uh, my name is Michael. Um, I play, I play a lot of things. Um, as you can tell, normally I've had to move my camera. You can see usually this level of nerdery happening, but over here, that's, that's a lot of role-playing books. I've, been collecting for way too long and various accoutrement. Um, I've been at this, I think if I do the math right, it's like I've been playing 25 years. Um, so I, I'm in that boat of I've been exposed to a lot of things. I would definitely um, say that I'm kind of middle of the road as far as length and breadth of what I've played. Like every time I talk to people who are doing it for a while, it's like, oh yeah, I played that. And then they say something I've never heard of and I get really excited. I'm like, what is that? Yeah, go on, tell me about it. Um, so yeah, I'm a nerd. Awesome. Awesome. Now, um, let me uh, set the scene a little bit. Uh, for those of you who are watching, you may not necessarily have watched our altered state um play game um if you haven't and you're watching this not live you know maybe pause go watch that two episodes three i guess if you count the session zero um come back and watch this um okay welcome back <laughs> um for those of you who aren't doing that that's fine don't worry about it uh it's it's cool uh, not everybody has the ability to do that. But um, Altered State um, is a cyberpunk style uh, rules and setting expansion for index card RPG, uh, which is a sort of, in some ways, you know, in a perspective, you could call it a rules light or a, 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 a rules less heavy. Those are the same thing um, kind of game system. Uh, made by published by runehammer games um it's fantastic uh, i you will never hear me not try to pimp it because i love it um it's really inspired by kind of the essence of the d20 system um and takes things uh from fate and uh, uh maybe blades in the dark and some other systems that really kind of uh focus on uh creating mechanics that get out of the way of narrative and the ability to tell a fun story at the table. Um, it's great. We're going to talk about it right here, right now. As I scroll through my questions list. Will we be watching the world wake up from history? Yes. Oh, wow. Nice. It took me a little bit, but I like it. I like it. Yeah, that was good. So, um, Gentlemen, my friends, um, uh, share maybe with me um, and uh, with our players, um, you know, kind of your initial thoughts, um, how you felt about the, the, the system that we played within ICRPG, and then um, also, you know, the game that we played together. Um, you can be a harsh critic of me, the DM, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I thought it was really fun. Um it took me a little bit to get used to the um like the stat system in IC RPG versus mm -hmm. D&D &D, 5e. Um so that was a little bit of a adjustment, but you know, it wasn't too tough. Overall the game was really fun. I love the setting. Yeah, I uh, I would start with saying I do absolutely love the altered state setting. Uh, what Ru Runehammer and company, those mad lads have done, uh, is very unique. Like it's a really good setting <laughs> that not a lot of other people are doing things like, um, and that was really great. Uh, it kind of gets into some of the tropes and genres that you don't see as much in a tabletop space because they still kind of exist more in intellectual intellectual properties that haven't necessarily been ported directly over or genres that haven't really started getting deep exploration of. There are probably games like that out there and there's not ones I've been exposed to. Mm -hmm. um, so if so, I apologize to everyone doing all the good work in that space. Um, 
I know for me, this is probably the lightest rule set game I've ever played. Like it's it's the other side of Blades in the Dark. Um, it may be comparable to Fate. I don't know. Um, so that was interesting to get into. Um, you know, just for you know, my bias personally is I I'm one of those people who's totally okay with crunchy games. Uh, you know, it, it took me years to figure out that not everybody loves that. Um, right. but for me, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for me, I'm definitely one of those people. like, I don't mind the crunch, but there's a utility to not having it that I also completely understand. Uh, it lends itself really well to the quicker, uh, faster games and especially like one shots or super short campaigns. Um, that, um, that, that is a, it is a good space to have in the hobby. It may not be the space I like to occupy all the time, but it's always pleasant to visit. Awesome. Right. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, you go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, for example, we start out with 10 hit points. Like, going into it, I was like, oh, this is going to be over in, like, an hour. <laughs> like, <laughs> and you roll D6s against 10 hit points. I was like, oh, man. But, you know, it, it was it was interesting to see how it all played out. Like mm -hmm. the different system, and like my impressions of it going into it. Yeah, yeah. One of this, one of the things that is a little nuts, like altered the altered state rule set uh, expansion, however you want to determine it, is they wrote as being a kind of a bigger, more bombastic, you know, a little more swingier in some cases um, than like what index card RPG is normally. I mean, yeah, you still have ten hit points, but like the kinds of damage that those some of those like guns and missile launchers 66 and grenades do. Damage. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um I was but yeah, I like as a DM I was pleasantly surprised that I did not murder you. You yeah. right away, yeah. which was really no, impressive we were... with some of those rolls right out of the gate. Yeah, I rolled yeah. a shit ton of ones, but yeah, and we were in like multiple encounters, back to back um, to back. Yeah, back to back. Yeah. Like we kind of just like jumped from one to the other, and yeah, the we system supports that really well. Didn't though. all immediately mm -hmm. die, <laughs> right? Yeah, like um, even the um, just yeah, it's like there's not a whole lot of expendable resources that you have to take a long time to get back together. You can take a heal action to get back hit points really quick. Um, it, you know, the system really supports the concept of going forward, which is kind of fast and furious. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Tell it's tooled to keep things moving and yeah. And have as a lot much of as, as much as I love Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> like Dungeons and Dragons really supports the, Tap, 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 move five feet. Tap, 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 move five feet, you know? Yep. <laughs> I miss I, I I miss both fourth and, you know, the play test for fifth where, here, have a short rest. It's 15 minutes. Right. That did keep it moving a lot faster. A lot faster, yeah. Um, let's go back a little bit um, to some of the, just to talk a little bit about the altered state setting. Um, Michael, you had talked about um, very vaguely um, about uh, some of these uh, tropes and different things that uh, you haven't necessarily seen um, in the tabletop RPGs before. Um, could you expound a little bit on that um, from your try. perspective? Yeah. I'll see if it's coherent. Um, That's my problem all the time. So, <laughs> uh, in a lot of broader swaths, you know, you see a lot of post apocalyptic. But post-apocalyptic ends up being very, everything's broken and nothing works. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you see, like in broad swaths, like you know, grim dark future, famously, you know, Warhammer 40k, where it all works but no one understands it. Um, it's kind of unusual, uh, at least in my experience. Um, and it may be an emerging genre in things like fiction. I su super hope it is in that case. Um, this concept of kind of post um, post peak. I would almost mm -hmm. say it's like, nope, eh, technology and everything kind of hit a peak and then it's kind of regressed a little bit um, and it still works. And more importantly, people still understand how it works, but it's not evenly distributed. There's lots of still ruin, but there's also parts that still work. Um, it's, a, it's a very neat concept. 
uh, at least to me, because it hits on a lot of those um, notes that like people, for example, loved about Star Wars, the lived in future, the sure, I've got a spaceship, but it's rickety as fuck. Um, right. You know, everything's, you know, from a generation and a half ago. Um, and it's neat to see that kind of blended in with a lot of the uh, what we consider cyberpunk aesthetic, because, you know, cyberpunk Cyberpunk became problematic about 20 years after it started, uh, and we all realized the future wasn't going that way. You know, even, um, you know, <laughs> it Gibson, really did. Yeah, Gibson, the guy who wrote Cyberpunk, stopped doing it after 10 years and when he interviewed about it, he was like, well, that's not how it's going anymore. Um, but it was a cool as hell aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing that get kind of a fresh life uh, and a new location that makes sense out of it is super cool. Oh yeah, yeah, I I think it's cool. I love yeah. Post peak, I think is really is really a right on sort of thing because it's really like like on the bell curve of human progression, which you know if you like read through you know reading through the book, like it actually hasn't stopped. It's just that this location Earth is kind of left behind, you know. So it's yeah, that's. I like that. That's good. And a lot of fiction talks about that, but it talks mm -hmm. about it from 300 years in the future. Right, right. And it's nice to say, no, 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 no. What's it like then? Yeah. Yeah, kind of like, you know, Numenera. I don't, I don't know what you guys know about Numenera, but, you know, Numenera is very much that, like, super future. And we're exploring all these things from various pasts. And we don't always understand the technologies, but... It's still like, okay, I'm kind of in this Star Trek IHOP future, maybe. And I don't, you know, I'm going to be honest. Don't take that as anything because I don't really know that much about Numenera. I don't know if it's really like the IHOP version of the future, aka Star Trek, versus, you know, Star Wars's dirty diner of the future. Well, it, if I remember correctly <laughs> from what I read about Numenera, it's more of a we're so far in the future that stuff's fallen off the map. Mm -hmm. And we know it's not magic, but we still don't understand how it works. Fair but we—it's not like ruined and creepy. It's—I got a miracle sphere here. What's it do? Miracles. Miracles. I don't know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the awesome. the, the 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 fiction that that brought to mind actually was uh Firefly. Mm -hmm. Like, what the hell happened to Earth? That was. That's that's it. That's you know that's your altered yeah. state right there. Yeah. Right. That you know that's. Oh, that's I didn't even think about that before. Like altered state could very well exist in the Firefly universe. But I'm certain it doesn't because that would be all sorts of trademarks and we love the room hammer boys, those mad lads, and want to make sure that they are perfectly safe. But playing it at my house, we can do whatever we want. Correct. <laughs> ah that yeah. Oh man, that's cool. I never thought about that. That's great. Um yeah, and that's, you know, and that's, you know, for those of you who don't know, you know, that's one of the big things with, like, the altered state is it, it's this kind of left behind future. So things exist, parts of these cities, these mega cities, right, are on, lights are on, neon, very much your 1980s, you know, cyberpunk future, but then the rest of it could very well be in Mad Max, because you know, or like, um, I am like I am legend, right? These kind of cities that are still there, but nothing works. There may or may not be vampire-like monsters roaming around. You know, the book gives you a lot of latitude for that concept. Yeah, it, it really does. Go with it. All right, let's get into a little bit. Um, ah, yeah, Dave, thanks. That's perfect. The other big thing about Altered State. For those of you who don't know, and maybe the biggest thing is that it really tries to be hero focused. Um, a lot of cyberpunk at the table um, is very work a day, right? You know, and Shadowrun, like, and I've I've played a few Shadowrun games, and I mean, it's always like, oh, we're working. Oh, we got to do another job to get some money. Oh, we got double crossed by the guy we got hired. Oh, okay, we got revenge. We're doing a job to get some money. And this is, Alter State is really about like bringing that D&D &D kind of epic scope back to, you know, which is what you see in TV and what you see in, 
movies and in literature about cyberpunk is that you know neuromancer is not a workaday story neuromancer is a hugely kind of epic like D D game but f- cy- cyberpunk you know it's futuristic right and that's the big thing alter state is trying to do anyway um let's talk a little bit more about the system um uh andy we haven't heard a little bit from you in a little bit and that's cool we're gonna get back to you so you mentioned um that um it there was a little bit of a learning curve for you right um talk a little bit about that like um you know tell the people a little bit what's different about some of these stats say from regular dungeon dragons that are different um and how and how like the conceits that those stats create like worked out in your brain. Right. So like, I guess the experience I had was with D and D and, you know, you have your proficiency bonus, right. And you have your stats, like your strength and everything, but those all give you like, you know, a plus one or plus two to like checks and attacks and stuff like that. Um, and with index card, it's all just those plus ones and plus twos, basically, mm-hmm. right? You don't have like the more detailed, you know, stat scores. So that was a bit of an adjustment. Like I didn't, I can see now, like why they do it that way. But mm-hmm. at the time, I was like, what? No, nah. like I had to kind of wrap my head around it a little bit. Yeah. And I like just today, I went back and kind of watched a video by the guy that made ICRPG about that mm-hmm. and like i can understand like when i heard him talking about it like made a lot of sense like why he implemented that sure you know now there are some other different stats um that index card rpg uses um to generalize and streamline some of the mechanics how like it, it, and they call it effort right. um and so instead of for those of you watching and don't know, instead of having like um, six different damage types for a small to medium sized sharpened piece of steel, aka a sword, and each one does a little different damage, yeah. um, they have, you know, effort that is weapon. So anytime you roll a weapon, you roll that d6 um, or ultimate and there's a there's a few different options um how was that for you that's as me as a as like in my dm and designer brain like effort is the most glorious thing on the planet <laughs> i love it so much yeah, um I can, I can how was see, that for you oh i just froze up again i'm having camera issues today but i can see how it would be a lot easier for dms like people that are running the game to keep things straight um but like for in my experience like most of my experience is online play on roll 20 and a lot of that's like handled automatically for me Mm -hmm. but you know so i can see how like if you weren't in that online setting where everything's automated and you're all in the same room playing like how it really really like streamline and simplify things Mm mm-hmm what are your thoughts, Michael? Fix my camera. I have no thoughts. My brain is empty. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I'm a teacup. It's interesting. I appreciate parts of it. Uh, mm-hmm. I understand kind of why it's put together. It's one of those things where I would fiddle with it a bit more, um, but kind of in the way that they did with uh, weapons and gear. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, effort is cool because it gives you a neat shorthand to go from, and then you go over to weapons and it gets complex again. Mm. So. Yeah, that's one. Yeah. That's one big thing that is a little different from, from say regular in Xcar RPG, um, either in whatever expression it is, whether there's fantasy and and sci-fi and like a weird West kind of thing. And they lean a little; those lean a little heavier on what the effort is, whereas, yeah, altered state. I agree; it's it is a little different because half of the weapons are like, no, nope, you're doing, you're not doing weapon effort; you're just rolling d, you're like sixty tens, 
and but they all do interesting things and yeah. they take that mechanic and make it interesting um mm -hmm. which you need to do especially in um i guess uh gear centric games like anything set in an era where there's a dizzying array of items available to you that all have unique and impactful effects mm -hmm. um and again, you know, given my bias, I thought that's cool. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those, I like it. I would play with it probably differently. And because I'm a weird nerd, I would <laughs> definitely get more granular with it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's got a lot of use and um, utility in it conceptually. Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> good. Yeah. I'm a good show host. I just randomly talk. <laughs> You're amazing. Um, <laughs> let no one tell you otherwise. <laughs> yeah. You can, um. Yeah. One of uh, one of the other really interesting uh, things that Index Car RPG uses um, that expresses itself into weapons in some cases, um, uh, but also into the minutia, the differences between characters. Um, is something I think I think comes from fate, um, which is tags, right? Um, for those of you who don't know, um, and in this expression of index car RPG, a tag is something that has both uh, narrative and mechanical implications um, that designate itself onto you. You know, so my character, um, I'm maybe you know i'm a like i'm an orc and so i have a tag you know to pull from like D, &D like half orcs have that rage ability or that st get up because i'm not dead ability you know maybe i have a tag like um hard to kill oh i like that <laughs> um and, you know and so that could have uh both the mechanical effect of when you go down you get back up again and a narrative effect of drinking a lager drink. That's like right. Like a cider drink? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like them. I really, man, I really like tags. They're a little weird at times because sometimes I'm, I have to be like, how do I narratively make this make sense? Um, it's really different from D&D, &D, right? D&D, &D, you get into the minutia of a character abilities i have 16 character abilities and they each do ultimately a slight variation on the same thing sometimes sometimes all different stuff um right but here we might only have like two tags i got two tags and i'm going to do a bunch of stuff um how was how was getting into that kind of play space um for you guys did you, did you like did the kind of open-ended concept of it, like this has some narrative effect that aren't specifically stated, was that having that kind of, I guess, freedom, a person could say, was that beneficial to you as a player? Yeah, I, yeah I'm I, always making you talk first. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I, I mean, I guess... Um, I kind of looked at them, they're a little bit like feats, right? But with like some narrative elements. Yeah. So yeah. I had I had this one that uh, I think it was uh, called Child's Play where it made all my decking checks easy or something like that. Mm -hmm. I really should have looked up exactly what my <laughs> my tags were. But um, yeah, I mean, um, I thought it, yeah, I thought it helped. You yeah. Know? It, 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 there was a few... Um, it was one of those things, though, where I had to really kind of keep track where I was getting bonuses to my intelligence mm. from, like, all these different spots. So, mm -hmm. um, but once I got that all down, I, you know, it was, I thought it was great. I, um, yes. I love a tag system. Yeah. Uh, but that's partially because D&D uh, &D is a very specific model of game, and it is reminisce it is a very specific structure mm -hmm. um and most other games aren't like that um at least a lot of the ones that i've read and played 
Um, and a lot of, especially modern games, um, they all have some variation on tags, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's a talent or um, it's, uh, you know, ooh, I picked a skill ability um, or, you know, anything like that. Uh, it's, it, it, is, it was a refreshing thing to get back into something that was a little bit more open-ended and where you had a bit more um, customization narr uh, and narrative, uh, you know, real choice. Mm -hmm. Like um, a, lo a lot of game design that you hear about, they get into, you know, the concepts of meaningful versus non-meaningful choices. Um, and, uh, you know, like with feats in 5e uh, of D&D, &D, um, they, they kind of refocused on if you're going to take a feat, it should be a meaningful choice and deeply impact your play style and what you're doing. And uh, like Andy was saying, that's exactly what tags are functionally, except instead of having a uh, skeletal structure of a class to hang it on that has a bunch of other things on it, it's just, nope, here's your tags, assemble as you will. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's... You know, and like unlike say feats, specifically in fifth edition, probably in third or whatever, whatever edition, whatever version of Dungeons and Dragons you might play, be it Pathfinder. That's right. I said that Pathfinder is a version of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Fight me. It is. Um, <laughs> but whatever version, right? Like if you're on the internet in the RPG space for more than twenty five seconds, somebody's going to tell you. Hey man, don't take this feat because it's it sucks. It's dumb. It doesn't work. It doesn't oh, do anything. The era of feat taxes. Yeah, you take like these three useless feats because it gets you the one good one in six levels. Right. <laughs> and I come from a space where I don't believe any of that because I play D and D on a regular basis, and my table is different than your table. So at my table, my feat choice might work out. Uh, your table that might not work out, um, but it does lock you in, right? Because it is a very specific thing. Whereas, like tags, like you know what, I took this mechanically, like the stated mechanic of it maybe isn't working out. Maybe like this instance isn't coming up, whatever that tag is. But narratively, you you still have a lot of strength. Like I can leverage the narrative aspect for a mechanical thing that isn't written down and right? that is something that like there's a lot of between the lines encouragement to do exactly what you're describing in um various editions of D, &D but since mm -hmm. it's never explicitly stated it's left up to you to either kind of role play or work with your dm on um right. and i think that's the if i were going to provide a reasonable critique of you know D, &D as far as that goes it's like uh, you know the feats are good um explicate them a bit more into mm -hmm. not just because you're trained with two weapon fighting you get these three benefits it's like well no what does that mean from kind of a narrative level am i by definition ambidextrous now too um, right stuff like that yeah it's definitely hard to have a statement in a book like a D, &D book that says or or from the designers online, and maybe I'll get some flack for this, but you can't say, it's your game, do whatever you want. But here's this very specific framework for how to play your game. Very specific. Um, you know, because on some level, uh, there's, a, there's a part of me that wants to honor both of those statements. Uh, whereas like ICRPG is like, from the get-go, like, hey, it's your game. Do whatever you want. Here's this very basic structure with which to build your game on. And they're very careful about what mm -hmm. they say is a hard and fast rule or even give numbers to because, yeah. you know, Brain. as they say, if if you give it numbers, we can kill it. Um, inversely, if we put numbers to it, people will look to us as an authority and a hard and fast rule that people will make assumptions on. Mm -hmm. And that's that is a great strength of the rules light uh, movement is yeah. the sometimes less is more. Yeah. Intention is definitely that big thing. Like have intention in what you stat, what you write up, what you say, because 
somebody's going to read that. Somebody's going to use it literally or figuratively, <laughs> you know. Uh, so if any of you are designing out there, be intentional with your design. Know what you want to do. Know who your audience is. In this case, Index Card RPG, your audience is people who like to make up their own crap and want a little bit of little bit of hand holding. Just a little. It's like a a picky handhold. <laughs> I love it. Mm. Um, what do you guys have any questions? For me, as a slightly more authority on ICRPG than than you are, um, was there anything in in our experience where you were like, "Hey, maybe I didn't use this ability, or maybe, you know, maybe there was this thing that has been bugging me since then." I know it's been like a month, so maybe you've forgotten about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, um. Like I, as far as my game gameplay went, um, I think what because I was a little less experienced with like all the gear that I had and that I was mm -hmm. trying to keep track of, like I think I, I probably took some liberties with the decking. Um, like specifically, I had the the defensive decking kit, but I, I think I was doing like a fair bit of offensive decking in the game. Like mm -hmm. for those that don't know, they call hacking decking in this in altered states um but i don't know so yeah i guess in that regard i got a little you know i found it a little confusing but you know i don't know it didn't interfere, it interfere with sure. the gameplay you know yeah. like there was like good flow to our game i thought so mm -hmm. like in hindsight i was like well maybe i kind of did a little too much with that but mm. you know it was it was fun <laughs> so yeah yeah, Dave just gave you some props in Discord chat. Um, my response to that is the following, <laughs> um, and is also a direct statement to anybody who has, doesn't, again, doesn't know about Altered State. Um, unlike other cyberpunk style games, um, or even some uh, like uh, science fiction games, um, you know, a lot of, you know, it's super common to have these very specific intentional rule frameworks for what happens in decking i log into a computer system roll roll your blah 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 okay i'm slotting in my my black ice killer thing to kill that black ice oh you know in, in every step of that direction is adjudicated and man when i was 18 playing Shadowrun back in the day. Mm, I loved it. I hated it because it you essentially ran two games, but um, whereas for those of you who don't know, Index Card RPGs or Alter State says that stuff's not fun. Who cares? It, here's a brief description of what these decks do, how they kind of work, how the decking rules work. It's a, a like a long form narrative kind of explanation of what decking is. And it specifically says, do whatever you want. Like, right. oh, you want to hack into somebody? Just say you're hacking into somebody. Roll a check, roll effort, whatever. Assign it a heart, assign it 10 hit points. Roll against it, accomplish it. And it, the difference between a, a, an offensive deck and a defensive deck, end of the day is really a defensive yeah. deck helps protect your identity and does it quiet like and an offensive deck is going to do everything loud but it's going to do everything punchy right um and ultimately like realistically you got to think that the people who are using offensive decks still want to do some of the things that defensive decks talk about doing like right data mining and and whatever as opposed to only people who run offensive decks are only slamming ice or intrusion countermeasure electronics for those of you who uh, aren't a acronym junkie like I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think you did great. Um, you know, and it's, it's you know, and in some ways, I you know, it is it's weird because it's new and being having this much freedom to say I just what can I do? Yes. Right. That's, yeah. As a DM, yes. What can you do? That's a good question. What do you want to do? <laughs> I would, I, I, what I would say is um, 
Uh, I have played six editions of Shadowrun, which is kind yeah. of where the decking term con came from. Okay. Um, the way you were playing is the dream that everyone ever playing a decker ever has wanted to, <laughs> and it was the most beautiful thing in the world to see. Um, and the new editions of Shadowrun have gotten towards that goal a lot harder. They've torn down a lot of that minutia that caused the two game issue. Um, so you were playing the goal that everyone's shooting for. Yeah. So no, mwah, it was it was so good. It was Chef kiss. it was it was precisely what it was supposed to be, and it made it made me so happy to see. It still makes me well, happy yeah. to think about. It was a lot of fun. I didn't I didn't realize going into it. I was like, oh, maybe I'll use that occasionally. I ended up you know, decking the entire game. I didn't fire my gun once. Yeah. You know, because I was super like, effective. I was taking over enemy machines and I don't know. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, that was totally that was how it's supposed to go. And it was, it was totally <laughs> awesome. Um, I don't remember what that question was. How about uh, you, Michael? How did, how, 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 how did you like, so you played a, you played a psychic character. Yes, um, I did. Which is, yeah, uh, an ex cool. and you know, this is a slightly different expression of psychic character powers and stuff than other games have. How, as a super fan, I know that you fan of psychics. Um, how, how was that for you? Fucking Bonza. <laughs> like it was, that was much like if you want to play a Decker, that's how you fucking do it. You brick shit left and right. You're taking over drones. You're turning people's guns on them. It's cool. You know, if you want to play, well, there's two kind of grades of, you know, I'm playing a psychic. There's the, I'm a little bit more low powered and I'm going to read people's minds and use subtlety to manipulate them. And then there's the, I want to pick up the truck and throw it at him <laughs> with my brain. I am very much in the second camp. The uh, Michael Bay of yeah. psychics. Yeah, yeah basically, it's, <laughs> it's are you doing Michael Bay or like I, I don't know any subtle uh, writers, unfortunately. Uh, apparently, um, Christopher because, Nolan, the Christopher Nolan of psychics. Eh, he still did a Harry Potter movie. He's not that subtle. Um, he I love a Harry Christopher Potter Nolan, movie. Though. I thought he did a Christopher. Eh, that's not the point. The point is, um, that's Chris Columbus. Good. Oh, Chris Columbus, you're right. I'm terrible. <laughs> Um, no, that's that's the type of stuff that I'm I'm very there in for. That's why I immediately latched onto it as soon as I saw the table of what's going on, mm -hmm. um, and it also the way it set up helped it provide a good parody with kind of the equipment and the challenges. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's cool. You can melt something with your brain if you take that power. Again, that's a ten a ten meter tall murder droid with six laser cannons and a missile launcher. That's the only way you're keeping up. <laughs> Um, and it, it did it real good. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. I was just thinking about it. It makes me want to play it some more. I love it. Um, I don't know how many people are watching. Who's watching? Are you watching? Is anyone watching? Does anyone who's watching have any questions? You watching this hopefully you're watching this live don't try to type into the chat right now if you're not watching it live i won't get it but you could tweet me from the future i guess i won't get it right now but we'll but answer it, it in the future yeah um i know <laughs> sadly no <laughs> questions um hmm, let's see what other questions what other discussion topics do i have um I see a question seven and a question eight you could touch on. Oh, yeah. Um, let's talk about likes versus dislikes um, a little bit more, or the strength of a method. Um, uh, say from a from a standpoint of storytelling, right, and, and the overall experience, um, since we do together all have experience with 5th edition Dungeons and & Dragons, and now this experience, um, while one is a very limited experience because it was only two days, um, but I don't know. It, what's your take on like is is one stronger than the other, um, or are they and most likely just different? Um, That's right. He's pointing at you, Andy, because he wants you to go first because he talks a lot. 
No, that's okay. He's much more <laughs> experienced with role playing games than I am. That's fair. So, you know, from a new player's perspective, like, do you mean like the um, with abilities and mechanics? Yeah, like, like you know, with the minutia, the very specific and intentional types of mechanics and abilities that you have in, say, fifth edition, right? Uh, versus a you know a more amorphous concept. Of what your mechanics and abilities are in, say, index card RPG, uh, I can I can definitely see the appeal. I'll say mm-hmm. that. Like, I think from a new player's perspective, like when you get into D and D, specifically, you're like, whoa, there's a lot of things to keep track of. But mm-hmm. then you get used to it and you move on. Um, so I can see how this system, the you know, altered state and the IC RPG is kind of like a little less um, intense, Mm -hmm. outwardly facing to like new gamers, Um, specifically kids too. I think it would work well with kids um, having a seven-year-old myself. Um, Like once you read, that was like one in the video I watched of the guy that made ICRPG, he was talking about just removing a lot of like the mathematical language from a lot of the gameplay just to make it less intimidating and more approachable. And Mm -hmm. so I can see the appeal there for sure. Um, But with that said, I, you know, that doesn't really bug me too much. I kind of like that about D and D. So, you know, I can see it's pros and it's cons. Do you, do you feel you were able to switch? um, And maybe this is just how I think about things, but switch between, your mechanical perspective and your story perspective um, in like an you... easier way. Like, cause I know for me sometimes, you know, with in fifth edition, um, you know, we'll be in a scene, we'll be role playing, something's happening. And, and there's definitely a part of me that's also trying to think about, okay, I have this ability that does this thing. I have this skill that expresses in this way. Like, how can I leverage that into, or how does that fit? And so there's a part of me that's right. kind of doing this math, right? Yeah. And in an index card RPG, it's like, for me, I have, there's less of a step up between the two states. Mm-hmm. Um, how is that, like, do you, is that, a, a, is that a thing that you have? <laughs> well, and, <laughs> right. and if so, like, was that transition easy easier in say the icrpg set it was easy to transition into doing i think okay Um, yeah it it seemed like and i don't know if this was just the nature of our game but it seemed like things were moving like much faster Mm -hmm. um like but you know we were doing a one shot so we kind of had to keep things moving to get to like our different things that we wanted to cover like story-wise um so yeah, I don't know, I guess I forgot where I was going with that, but <laughs> <laughs> someone else talked for a while. Fair so. enough. <laughs> um good dude. Uh one new player perspective is actually always super important, buddy. So never like feel bad because I'm newish. It's like, no, that's freaking critical because you know, as noted, I've got a shit ton of biases. I know what I like. I know what I don't like. And there Mm -hmm. have been times in my life where it's been like, oh, well, I don't like systems that are like such and such. And I've skipped them and then come back around after the fact, played them and been like, never mind. I liked that. Mm. If you watched my last, our last show where we interviewed Jeff. Damn it. Stevens. (laughs) Jeff, damn it. <laughs> Jeff Stevens, damn it. Sorry, Jeff, I forgot your last name. Is it Jeff Damn it Stevens or Jeff Stevens, damn it? It's just Jeff <laughs> Stevens. Um, and, and I rambled on about the heavy metal perspective. That's what that is. That's, a, that's what that is. You come back to it later and you're like, oh, wait, no, I, li- I really like this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as far as uh, the systems and if one's stronger, one's weaker, um, like you prefaced where you knew this would end up, they're just different, and it depends yeah. on what you like, what you want, where you're going. Um, rules light is great if you want a fast-paced game where you don't get bogged down in a lot of 
the minutia of anything and that's mm -hmm. that's the trick it's the minutia of anything there are things you lose going at that speed you can lose role-playing opportunities you can roll moments of neat emergent storytelling that happen from crazy rules interactions or crazy narrative element interactions that having been said those aren't guarantees right. so there's perfectly a great deal of validity for saying nope we're just going for the awesome um the 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 you know on a purely personal level the thing i would not like about icrpg uh is the same thing i wouldn't like about the forged in the dark series which is it's not a great system for kind of long-term invested play invested in a single character or even a small number of characters um because the way you grow um is you know it's not particularly uh large vertically and it's not terribly wide horizontally either that's fine if what you're shooting for is fast furious we're going to do six sessions with these characters hit those high points rock it out then yeah that's absolutely sure. perfect if you're looking for something that's a little bit slower paced something that and this session we're shopping and catching right. up with three of our friends at home and wondering what the hell happened to our families um not really a blades in the dark or you know a light system uh approach um or at least that's my feeling for icrpg sure um i think that's i imagine you could definitely do it uh and that gets into the philosophy i would think of you don't need rules for role playing you can do whatever um mm -hmm. which shockingly was the same thing D D fourth did um and a lot of people gave it flack for that but that's just me having an issue <laughs> um yeah there are, there are definitely i'm sure people uh who would argue uh the opposite against you um about the like long form format for say icrpg um i i you know i definitely feel i i can see what you're saying i uh especially say altered state um i'm sure that there's plenty of long form opportunity but it like between altered state and say the it, like the core index card rpg like i can see that altered state can kind of perhaps be more um at home in a shorter form um now i'm gonna have to run a uh, long form uh, uh i see rpg so we can test it out let's test out this theory <laughs> the long form yeah because we are after all scientists well, and that's, I think Not it really. could Not definitely really. be done with just a little tweaking. Yeah. Um, you just have to get into um, the concept of what are the rewards for extended play mm -hmm. other than just character. And, you know, while character alone can and should be rewarding, um, th there is a game component as well. And um, as you go through milestones, um, you know, where are you getting, what control do you have over that? Can you work towards goals? Mm -hmm. um, those sorts of questions are the ones that kind of come into play. Um, and again, that's, there is something to be said for that may also be pointless because while I know a lot of us have played one or two long-term games, I'm sure a lot of us have also played a bunch of games that were supposed to be long-term and lasted three sessions. So yeah, and that's, you have to you know, acknowledge a, that reality. That's a good point, you know, like, as a lot of the people who are pulling metrics from the internet doing surveys like Sly Flourish. Do, we have so much data, famous, great. Famously did a huge survey. I think he published it in 2018 or early 2019, if I remember right. But like, it, according to his huge survey, like something like 80% of any D&D &D game ends before sixth level in fifth oh, edition. Wow. You know, it's like sixth to seventh level. And I don't remember exactly what those numbers are for real, but I do I can beyond a shadow of a doubt say that most of these games aren't going to to what we would call high levels. Like games aren't getting above tenth for whatever reason, right? And it could be a number of factors. And what I'd love to hear um, from that data is how long are they playing per level? Because I know there's there's the like written expectation, for example, for fifth that oh you should level every four hours of gameplay, and mm -hmm. I've never seen anyone do that. Right. Um. So, and that's yeah, are you are that, you leveling up every other session, right? Yeah. Or are right. you or are you leveling up like are these like 
two year games that somebody's dragging into ten levels. You well, know? and that kind of gets back into with I, I see RPG, you know, and the um, how does it work in a long term game? Does it provide enough? goals and rewards systematically to make long-term play feel um, rewarding in that style. And that may be even just a question of pacing, or it may yeah. not. Um, I think a lot of that's going to, you know, like many things in the world, can boil down to tab table culture. And however you do it at your table, which was the, of course, answer we just opined against earlier. Right. Um, <laughs> but it's also yeah. a, a, is also a truism. So Dave just did a little bit of uh, internet digging and found that uh, twenty five percent of games only only twenty five percent of games played um get to between seventh and ninth level i was I was pretty damn close yeah <laughs> but man that is a part of me says the old school gamer in me says, what are you doing <laughs> like <laughs> The, and the older, older school game, which was before my time, but like the the seventies gamers and like the early eighties would go, yeah, yeah, it's about where it's supposed to go. It's all it went in the first place, right? Right. And maybe there was a reason for that. Oh, fifteen percent get to nineteenth and twentieth. I was here's here's the thing. I wanna I wanna either get there or I wanna talk to some. We need to do a new show. <laughs> We're gonna find people who've played in more than two games at epic level at twentieth level, like. What's that experience like? That'd be a great show to talk to I've never to even done about. that. I've been at never this for it. literally yeah. 25 years, and we've never <laughs> hit, we've ended campaigns, but they never hit max mechanical level. I had two games in third edition where I either got to 20 or beyond 20. One game we ended, I think I was 27th or 28th level by the time we ended. Um, and that was some, if you played third edition D&D &D viewer, <laughs> 28th level is some bonker stuff. <laughs> it was literally this week where I found out how the original AD&D stuff, it's like original AD&D actually went to 30th level. And then mm -hmm. they took it away for a while for some editions. And then they sort of added it in third, yeah. th four, third. And then it was all, it was in all the way in fourth. It's like, that was just, that's interesting. Because for the longest time I was like, that wasn't real. And then it's like, oh, oh yeah. it was. All right. Well, my friends, uh, my internet friends out there too. Uh, it's it's about that time. Um, it's nigh on three o'clock Central Standard Time here in the good old U.S. of A., uh, which means that we must um, wrap it up. The show's over. Thank you for watching, my friends. In real life, uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I enjoyed this chat we had. Um, I hope you did. I hope you viewers enjoyed this chat. Uh, if you have uh, any uh, interest in learning more about Index Car RPG or uh, Altered State, um, there's a link in our chat. Um, we'll, we'll probably throw a link into our description, maybe, uh, when we throw this up on YouTube. Otherwise, you can just go to, oh, no, I'm going to forget it. I think it's runehammer.net. Rune, just search runehammer games. Um, you'll find it. He's got a super awesome YouTube channel, Patreon, all that kind of stuff. Um, they do great work, so check them out. Um, as always, uh, we will see you uh, next Wednesday, next Thursday. Um, oh, Ru Dave, are we doing Roll Your Doom in two weeks? I should have asked this before. I totally forgot. <laughs> TBD. Okay, so next week, to be determined, or in two weeks from now, to be determined whether or not we will be doing a Roll Your Doom. I am doing a charity ruck march. Um, so it might just be Dave. It might just be that we take a weekend off um, and don't do it. Um, but anyway, as always, play games, roll dice, tell stories, have a good time. See you guys.